Thank you for joining me for yet another unboxing video. And today we have Conan, brought to you by Fred Henry, Adrian Smith, and George Sorenko by Monolith Games. Again, this is a non-Kickstarter version. I happened to pick this one up at actually at a comic book store. Got it for about 50 bucks, which is a little bit down from what we usually would pay at a retail. Again, this is a non-Kickstarter version of the game. So uh, let's flip it over and see what it says in the back for us. It says, it's a very, very large box, very, very heavy box. So I'm gonna try to get us so we can see the back of the box. There we go. Enter the realm of Hyboria and fight alongside Conan. Relive the Sumerian's greatest adventures with eight unique scenarios that take you all across all of Hyboria. From hearth-lit taverns to shark-infested waters, from Piet villages to Bosonian strongholds, you get to witness Conan's defending moments firsthand. Join the iconic barbarian Arshevtaz, the master thief, Hadrathius, the priest of Asura, and Belit, the queen of the Black Coast. Please excuse me if I'm pronouncing these wrong. One player among you is the Overlord, who commands the forces of darkness and opposes the heroes at every turn. At, this, at his disposal are ferocious beasts, demons of the outer dark evil necromancers, and the notor notorious Zogar Sag with his hordes of Piet warriors. The Overlord holds the advantage unless the heroes work together, and only the craftiest side will emerge victorious. Now you can create your own Hyberian legend. So again, this game is for 14, ages 14 and up, for two to five players, 90 minutes. It's part of the TH system. It came out in 2016. Gives you all your asset cards. Hi, Rosie. And it's put out by Monolith Board Games. So there's the back, some picture of some of the figures. Hi, Rosie. Stopping by to say hello. So let's crack this bad boy open and see what kind of goodness we have on the inside. So as I stated, there's a lot, a lot of things. Again, I got this game secondhand, so things are been unpunched already. But I can give you a brief overview about what is contained inside the non-Kickstarter version of this. So then we have also obviously a huge box here of miniatures and stuff. So I'm going to start off, also I'm going to show you the miniatures last, but I'm going to show you a lot of the contents at the beginning here. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to take this out. Just going to move some stuff around as we're going here. Again, for 50 bucks, I thought it was, a, it had, it was kind of a had to purchase. So first thing I'm going to show you I have here is the Overlord. It looks like it's the, I have an Overlord book. And we have the Heroes book. So let's start with the Overlord's book. So the Book of Skelos. Okay. Talks about the tiles. Explanation of the tiles, the cards, armor value, the different dice that are used. Movement value, melee attack icon, the ranged attack icon. Skills, life points, dredging the river, reinforcement costs. The Overlord's turn, recovery phase. The activation phase. Benefits, movement, guard. Reroll, casting spells, and then the scenarios. And the clutches of the pits. Winning the game, the setup, three heroes that should be used, if you use three or four heroes, and of course the special rules down here. Then we are hunting the tigress. Again, more setup on a boat this time. Winning the game. Suggestion of characters. If you add a fourth, how to set it up, what cards, and of course a special rule. So it looks like every 
scenario is uh, set up the exact way, same way in this book. So in the Heart of Darkness, again, more information here, winning and everything else you need to know. Then we have the final ritual. Then you have for all of Ophir's gold. Again, I apologize if I'm saying any of these names wrong. It's not done intentional. I've never been a big Conan fan in the sense of like from comic books or reading the, the, the novels that are written about him. I've always enjoyed the character, enjoyed the films with uh, Schwarzenegger and back in the day when they came out. The Wrath of Anu. But again, Conan has always been one of these iconic characters. And when I had read that there was a Kickstarter, that's why I didn't back the actual Kickstarter when it came out. But when I saw this used, I said, you know what? I've heard a lot of good reviews. I've seen good reviews on YouTube and different posts about people, about the figures and everything else being cool. So I said, you know, for 50 bucks, why not take a shot and see if I enjoy the game? Inferno Pursuit Part 1. Infernal Pursuit Part 2. I like the fact that there is a boat on here. And so we can have not only adventures on the boat, but you can also have fighting on a boat and everything else. That's cool. This, I believe this is one of the only games I have where that actually a boat is utilized. That's really cool. Trapped Like Rats. And there you are. In the back, it gives you all the special rules. So recovering equipment, freedom, hidden in the shadows, alarm, breakout, walls, leaping from, climbing a balcony, leaping from, climbing a stairwell, and chess. So there you have that. That is the Overlord's book. Put that over here. Then we have the Hero's book. Again, let's take a look at that cover art real quick. That's really cool. Really love that. Very thematic, right on point with that artwork. I like that, of course, then you have Conan and you have a picture of Conan himself and the hero's book. Contents and setup. Overlord chooses a scenario, depending on the scenario. Overlord attaches colored bases. Overlord prepares the book of Skelos. Overlord places the track sheet. Other players choose heroes to play. Nine dice are placed on the table, and each hero takes the number of blue energy gems. All right. So it looks like the setup of a battle right there. Explain to. In color. Excellent. So it appears that the blue stuff will be for the heroes. As you can tell, the blue gemstones will be for our heroes, and the red ones will be used for uh, the villains. I'm wondering if that's like those are used for like action points or energy points. Energy zones. There we go. Conan. Receive a reserve zone, fatigue zone, wound zone, hero's death. Hero actions, melee attack, hindering melee attacks. Ranged attack, hindering ranged attacks. Elevation and line of sight. Elevation, elevation bonus for ranged attacks. I have the high ground. Guard. Hindering. Armor. Again, I like the fact that they have the uh, information for you right here that tells you if you're playing the game, this is what happens. You take a swing. I like. I love the fact that they give you all kinds of examples. Uh, it's in full color. Shows you if you are rolling dice, what the results are, and what you would have to do. Uh, it's always helpful when you're re when you're playing a game for the first time and you see this. It's always good to look back at the pictures to you know to take a look to see whether you're doing things the right way. They were up to manipulation, hindering to form to perform a multi a complex manipulation. Hindering, throwing and catching an object, dropping an object, opening a chest, re-rolling, hindering, again, 
move. So it appears that the hindering uh, affects uh, the characters uh, for many different things. So we're really going to have to take a look at what hindering is. Again, here we go. Here we go, whole section on hindering. Occupied areas, and here we go, hindering. Hindering of movement. If the number of enemy characters in a character's area is higher than the number of other friendly characters in that area, that character must spend extra movement points equal to the difference to move out of that area. Oh, that makes sense. Right, so if you got two bad guys and one good guy, if you got two good guys, one bad guy, you can move freely. But if you got two bad guys, one good guy, it's going to hinder you. You're going to have to add something to that, right? If two heroes are in the same area as three enemy characters, the first hero must spend two extra movement points, right, to move out. Exactly, that's what I thought. And, all right, cool. Hindering die rolls now. If the number of enemy characters in a character's area is higher than the number of other friendly characters in that area, when that character rolls dice, ignore a number of symbols equal to the difference. Melee attack, guard, and reroll actions as well as fall, falling damage are not affected by hindering. Okay. So if a, one character is in the same as three enemy characters and that hero attempts to pick the lock on the chest, three symbols are ignored. So if this lock would have required two symbols to be successful, the hero would need five symbols. Or say, oh, wow. Right. I don't know why you'd be looking at a chest while you're beaten, beaten down by three guys, but at the same time, some people, I guess, will. If two heroes are in the same area as three enemy characters and one of the heroes attempts to pick the lock on the chest, two symbols are ignored because you're too busy fighting. Well, that makes sense to me. Right, so it's a penalty. You, in other words, it's a penalty on you. All right, I get it. Skills and encumbrance. Again, more examples of that. Hero turn overview. Okay, so hero turn. You start the phase, stance phase, action phase, and end phase. Start phase. Move the gems around. Stance phase. Each hero chooses the either aggressive or cautious. Okay, makes sense. And then you have the action phase. You perform different actions in any order that you want. In the end phase, each hero moves all gems from their action spaces to their fatigue zone. Play then proceeds to the overlord's turn. Okay. And then another great picture there. Uh, asset cards, equipment cards. Let's break down how, how to read those cards. Then we have item cards, life potion, spell cards, fail, uh, falling damage, and area attacks. And the credits and tells you about all the good people who helped bring this game to life. All right, so we've got the Heroes book and the Overlords book. Okay, so obviously for every game, as it said in the instructions, you have to have an overlord. So that's why it's two plus players. I guess you could probably be, uh, could probably play it solo, but probably be kind of difficult at the same time. So then right off the bat, I'm going to show you this. So we got some, looks like we have some character cards here. So let's take a look at what we got here. Some different cards. We have defense and magic skills. Sacrifice, untouchable, bodyguard, protected, spellcaster. And on the flip side of that, what do we got? Oh, same thing. Sacrifice, unless oh, it's a different language version. Okay. So we get a defense and magic skills card. Miscellaneous skills. Alchemy, leadership, concentration, lock picking, fascination, horror, jinx, poison, support. This looks probably a time tracker or something. It goes from 0 to 15. There's 15 on this side as well. So it says Western Southern Sea on this one. And it says on this side, it says Western and Southern. Okay, it looks like it's the same. 0 through 15. And this is, this is 0 through 15 as well. All right. And then we have some, oh, got another sheet here, which helps you out with attack skills, reach, ambidextrous, construct, uh, constriction, circular strike, precision strike, attack from beyond, counterattack, elite shooter, and a precision shot. Okay. Looks like it's English on one side, French on the other. And then of course we have movement skills, blocking enemy, 
wall wrecker, evasive, swimming, intangible, web projection, leap, feline grace, flying, and climb. Right. Then we have this. We have Hadrothus. Just 10 on there. Again, all these icons will be explained in the rule books as to what they mean. Looks like he's a spellcaster. Looks like it looks like front and back are the same. Five, two. Yep, the same. Okay. Then we have Belit. Shabbatus. And then we have Conan. Okay. Now we also have some punch outs. All right. Nice thick cardboard. Yeah, you can't bend that. That's really, really nice. Really nice thick cardboard you got right there. Fits perfectly back in. So it looks like you got a thing of casks up there. Some numbers. Some, looks like some spears. Flip it over, see what's on the back. If it's the same, nope, it's different on the back. Yeah, I guess this one here is a closed chest and an open chest. I guess that's what that is. Yeah, open versus closed. All right, there's your first set of tokens right there. Again, I bought this used, so it looks like some things have been unwrapped and other things have not been. But obviously, they haven't been punched yet. Oh, let me flip it away this way. Be better up there. You can see them clearly. Okay. I see numbers, characters that you might be coming into contact with. Looks like some webs down there, some fallen rock. Not sure what that is. But then here we have some cards as well. Picked Hunter, Pirates. So you got different color ones. You got red, blue, and green. Maybe they're different strengths or something. Yeah, it looks like 3, 2, 2, 1. Oh, sorry. 2, 1, 2, 1. Nope, I guess the same. But the red, blue. You got green type. Then you got Thallus. Another pirate. There's some more pirates here. The Bassonian guards up top here, these two. And they have two pirates here. And then you have a hyena and a Bassonian archer. So that's what it looks like. And if I flip it over to this side, whoop, oh, looks like that's the uninjured, and this is obviously injured or, or dead with the blood stain on the back of it. Okay. Makes sense. It's cool, I like that. All right, let's see what we got here. This is my first time actually going through the box as well, so a lot of this stuff is a nice surprise to me as well. So it's another sheet of tokens. Okay, sticking up a little bit. Okay, put that on top like that. Put that over here. And then we have another sheet of tokens. It's got a lot, so let's take a look here. So we got Bossonian archers again, hyenas, Zargar Sag, the captain, dark demon, a coast. 
a co coastral kel, if I'm pronouncing that correct, I'm not sure. Bostonian guard, Othal, Othak, sorry, giant snake, Zaporov, oh, princess, Zap or Abo, giant snake, Thak, Bostonian guard. I can move these to the side because it's too big. Picked warrior, Scuthus, Outer Dark Demon, Pit Hunter, the Bosonian Guard, another Bosonian Guard, another Bosonian Guard, the Pit Hunters, Thak again, the Giant Snake again, this is Outer Dark Demon, Scut Huts, Scut Huts, I guess. Elite's guard. Again, the princess. So there you are. Again, it pops right out. Nice, nice thick cardboard yet again. So again, pops right back in. And then you've got the, whoop, just popped a punch of them out. Give me a second. I just accidentally been picking it up. So they're in there good, but at the same time, they pop out pretty, if you hold them a certain way, they pop right out. Okay, I'll see the damaged ones. meaning bloodied during battle. So I'll see, that's the change there. I'm not sure, I, I'm assuming it means wounded, but I'm not sh sure how wounded they are. Maybe if they have three wounds, maybe they drop it over into the second wound and then they're dead from that point further. Okay, we also have game tiles. And you get a bunch of bunch of game tiles here. Oh, they're game boards, actually. Okay, so they're not tiles, they're game boards. So this is one portion of the board. So you have multiple boards in this game. Okay. So I'm going to try to show you the boards as best I can. Okay, so let me flip it onto the other side real quick. So here we go. Looks like a little village, basically, which is good to see. I'm going to move this stuff to the side so I can open this up a bit. It's out of the way so we can open this board up here so everybody can see it. So I'm going to flip it open once. So it looks like one side is a, one side is like a village. And inside here looks like it's, Inside a house, maybe not a house, but maybe an estate or a, uh, a castle or something like that. Lots of different rooms in it. Staircases going up. So let's open up. So here's the bottom half. Really, it's really a gorgeous board. Again, this is the bottom half of the board. The entrance down there. So that's one side. So I showed you both the sides. Here's this side of the board. Looks like it's the bottom half. And then we have the top half of the board. I'll just turn around this way. So it is a village of some sort, like I said before. And there's the entrance to it. So if I open the board up completely, so as you can tell, it's a very, very large board. But that's a clear shot of what it looks like on this side. So if I flip that over really quickly, again, I don't want to break the board. That's from the opening. There you go. That's just what the board looks like. Again, I'd have to flip this one this way direction. But that gives you a feeling of what the board actually looks like.
All right, so that's one of the boards. A huge board. It looks really, really cool, though, inside it, gotta be honest. Now, the next one looks like the outside of a castle, which is really cool. Okay. I'm gonna jump in right here. There's this is the second board that comes with the game. Bats, you got fire down there, got some skeletons. Okay, then we'll flip it to the other side real quick. Again, it's my intent not to break the board. Now, if I was to open this board, it would look like that. And it's a very large board on the inside. I should say on this side of the game board. So I'm going to flip it this way as well. Try to get you guys to see as much of it as you can. Okay, so you can see, again, it's the exact same size as the other board, but it is pretty large overall. And then we're gonna flip the board. Again, I don't wanna break it, but how cool is that? Again, that's one section, which is the boat. Great detail on it. Awesome, beautiful looking. We're having a battle at sea. All right, that's one side. Carefully, I'll grab the other side to show you the other boat, and then I'll put the whole thing down. Again, when there's a battle going on here, it'll all be explained to us in the rule book that we have, the two, the good guy or bad guy books. All right, so I'm gonna put this down so you can see it right off. Man, it's awesome. Beautiful, just beautiful to look at. Really gives you a feel of being in a, at a battle at sea, you know, a naval battle. Now you can see why they have the rules for jumping. So if you had to jump from one side to the other side, that's pretty cool. Okay, and again, we had, let's put this stuff back here again. We'd be looking at the Overlord's book and the Hero's book that will tell you how to have that, that kind of combat and everything else with that. And we had our sheets that help us understand all the terms and what we can do as players. And then we have the players' cards themselves that are up there. Again, the sheets of tokens are all right here as well. So now that we got all that stuff done, let's get to some other things. We got lots and lots of these. And these are for the bases for your figures, which you can help you identify who is who during the game. And it appears to me that there's going to be a lot of figures on the board at one time. So you're going to need a lot of these bases. These bases, as you know, slide on very easily. But there you go. You got a whole bag full of those, which you're going to need. Game specific dice we have. It looks like we have three different colors. It looks like there's a red, a yellow, and an orange. I believe all the dice are the same, so let's take a look at the yellow first. Okay, so there's little, I see there's little arrows. Got two axes, he's got a third axe. Okay, so it looks like, the, uh, let's see what we got, you yeah. know. So all the yellow ones are identically the, the same, it appears. You just line them up properly. Yep. Two, three. Yep, there you go. Get your dice lined up perfectly. That side, that side, yep. Yep, so these three are exactly the same. So there you go. There's your yellow dice. Very cool. I like that. Rolling starts off super great with three misses. 
Fantastic. Then we'll go with the reds. Yeah, they appear to be the same. It does appear to be the same, all three of them. So they got some. All right, so before I had three blanks, now I got three axes. There you go. And of course, like I said, you got the orange as well. So I'm not sure if you're a good guy using the red, the yellow, or the orange. I'm not sure, or a combination of. So there you go, you got two, one, and one. But there's your game specific dice. You get a total of nine of those. Again, this is the non Kickstarter version. So you may get some additional ones if you back the Kickstarter. I did not. Okay, so then we have, of course, what would a game be without actual cards in them? So let's take a look at what we got here in terms of cards. Oh, these aren't cards. These are more punch outs. There you go. No, sorry, they're mini cards. So you got some of these that look like that. Some that look like this. Oh, here. So that look like these. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, let's grab one of those. So let's take a look at the, there's the gray cards, and then there is the gentleman who is working. Okay, so we have this one here. That's what this says. Ori's Rage, Sets Bite, Kiss of Death, Enemy Drain. Let's see what it says. Choose a hero in an area adjacent to you in that, in your line of sight. That hero moves one gem from their reserve zone to their fatigue zone, and you move three gems from your fatigue zone to your reserve zone. Okay. Pestiential Swarm, Mitra's Halo, Set's Halo, Teleportation, Magical Dizziness, Set's Possession, Mind Control, Born by the Wind, Telekinesis, Mitra's Healing, and Gift of Life. Choose a hero in your line of sight. Move, your, move up to two gems from your reserve zone to the chosen hero's reserve zone. Okay, so that's one set of cards right there. And we've got a second set of cards. That's really cool artwork. Really, really cool artwork. Guy working on making a sword. So we got leather. Oh, the, this must be the item deck. Leather armor. Chain mail. Scale mail. Buckler. Tribal shield. Regular shield, Chris, dagger, dagger. So I'll see all of your icons identify how you can fight with them, what the damage is, what you need to roll for wounds, all that kind of stuff. Dagger, parrying dagger. You, it's she knife, throwing knives, crossbow, javelin. Bostonian bow, sword, Conan sword, a battle axe, ornamental spear, a halberd, sorcerer's scepter, explosive orb, spellbook, tribal mace, life potion. Tools, key, fetish, fetish, empty chest, empty chest, Stygian artifact, uh, Zoot Charles crown, and Zoot, uh, not exactly sure how to say that, so Utol's Tull's crown. Right, there you go. So I apologize for the if I am saying the names wrong again. Of course, you got a bunch of gems, red and blue. Blue is for the heroes, red are for the, I guess you could say bad guys. Let's take a couple out so you can take a look at see what they look like. 
Close. Okay, get them out of the bag. There you go. Make sure you get two of each. There they are right there. The jewels look like that. So there's your red and blue. They're identical. Just different color. So you get a whole bag full of them. You also get the plastic tray on the insert that keeps them in place. There you go. The first figure I'm going to show you. Oh, I forgot this card over here. That was Lightning Storm. I'm going to put that one over there. Looks like. Okay. Let's get this guy out of here. Oh, there we go. So the first figure I'm going to bring out is this cool snake. Or giant snake, it's called in the game. Very high definition. Very, very cool sculpt. That's pretty huge. So I'll put that back here over here. You kind of use it as a size reference. And of course, it comes with the box it came in. Now, inside, you also get a box that looks like this. It says Con 01. Packed very nicely in the box. I'm just going to pull them out. So you get miniatures also for this game. As you can tell, a whole heck of a lot of them. And if you, again, this is a non-Kickstarter version of the game. So if you've got the Kickstarter, you probably got a bazillion more than this. So... So there you go, just showing you just some of what we got there. So we got a lot of figures that came in the box. So let's take a look here. One at a time, oops, sorry about that. Let's move that a little bit. Sorry about that guys, non-intentional. All right, so it looks like you got your heroes first off. So we'll pull them out. There's your heroes. Very cool scopes, uh, sculpts. They have a high detail on them, which will make them fun to paint. Now, size differential. Put snake back there. You also have Conan. That usual, you picked on the, it's the wrong day to start something with me. Look on his face. Looks like we have some kind of sorcerer here. Again, high detail, very cool, nice sculpts. There you go. And you have this lady as well. Those are your good guys. So it appears that you have five of those. Some other figures I see here. So this may be you get one of him. This looks like it looks like Conan as well, but it may not be. But it looks like Conan uh, in a bigger fight, uh, maybe in a different position that he's in. I'm not sure. Maybe he's at rest here or whatever. I'm not sure. But there you go, you got that guy. You get one of this figure. Looks almost like a captain telling the telling his troops where to go. Get one of this. Come on. Pop in there for me. There you go. Okay, get one of those. One of this character. Again, I'm not sure of their names, but again, high quality figure. Cool sculpt. 
lot of detail on them. So that's another guy. I'm gonna put him back here. One of these demon looking figures. Big apish type figure. Another big guy. Looks like possibly a demon. Not sure. But it's a big guy. Got muscles on his back. There you go. So you have basically all the characters that are here, you only have one copy of those. Again, this is the non-Kickstarter version, so I'm just going to say there's just one of each of these figures that you get one. You get five wolves. I'm assuming they're wolves. But they look like wolves to me, so there you go. Again, high quality, really good sculpt. Lots of details on it. True 28 millimeter. Very cool. And you have these guys. So I'm not going to pull them all out of the box because they are all are identical sculpts to this. So let me count to see how many we have of these. So this guy here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We got 15 of these guys. Three sets of five. So you get 15 of guys that look like that. Okay. Again, there are the additional figures that I was talking about. I'm not going to pull them all out, but there they are. I think that, I'm going to put this over here. So you see that those figures are also included in the game. You have a game board. I'm not sure which way you're supposed to hold it. I'm, I'm going to say it goes this way. Because the model looking is down here. So this game board you have. Nothing on the back. So, oh, you get one of these guys, so put that in the here like that. Move these things back. Okay, so let's take a look. You have five archers. So you get five of these. You get 10 guys with halberds. So you get 10 guys like that. All right, you get 10 of those. Oh, sorry, you get 15 of those. You, you get, you get five, with, with five archers and you get 15 guys with halberds. You get five of these guys. Now, they're a lighter gray, so I'm, I'm assuming that they would be part of friendly forces, but I'm not sure. Again, we'll have to find that out, figure that out. Might be some, you know, somebody from a village that's helping out Conan and his band, his war band. So I'm not sure, but that's those guys. So you get five of those. And you get 15 of these guys. There you go. So if I show you that real quick again. Just recap that again real quick for you. So you got again, you get the five archers. You 
get the 15 guys with halberds right there, 15 of them. Get 15 of those guys right there. And then you get five on the bottom. So all that is included in board game. Conan, brought to you by Monolith Games. Again, thank you so much for joining me for this unboxing video. It's truly appreciated. If you enjoyed it, you can always give us a thumbs up. And of course, you can always subscribe to our channel. This way you're kept up to date with all the unboxings that we do. And of course, you can always leave a comment below as well. This way we can hear what your thoughts are about this game or any other game you happen to be playing now. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Be safe, be well, enjoy the remainder of your day, and we'll catch you on the next unboxing video.